I don't want to go into the into the detailed causes of it, but the uh, they haven't been remedied. Uh, bank regulation is is in the process of being tight, tightened slightly, but not not greatly. Uh, the problem of uh, growing debt has uh, shifted more from private individuals to governments, and the predominant austerity policies are making things worse. But as well underlying it is the problem of the shift of economic power from the West that produces the global imbalances that we, that we find, which is an, another of the major causes of what's, what's happened. But it's also um, carrying within it uh, economic problems for the West, so that with the export of manufacturing industries, the new industries are kind of insufficient to generate enough employment to replace the departure of the old industries. Schumpeter uh, talked about capitalism being a process of creative destruction, continuously regenerated, where there's a destruction of old industries, the creation of new ones. Well, that's still going on, and we've had new industries, microelectronics and biotechnology, but they're not generating enough employment. They're capital intensive, not labor intensive. And so underneath the recession, we, uh, the short-term effects of the recession, there is also the problem of the, uh, of the widening of inequality and the possible creation of a, say, a two-thirds, one-third society, where two-thirds of the population are reasonably well educated, they have proper jobs, special skills and the like, but one-third is not. And the inequality between them rises, and um, since this is a, not a period of social democracy, <laughs> their plight becomes um, more, more serious. And so, it's the problem that unemployment might be continuously high, that the jobless recovery might not just be a product of this year, but of a, of a, a whole period. Now, the extent of this problem varies somewhat between different countries, but austerity, austerity programs don't help. Um, uh, and combined, these forces are threatening to destroy the economy on which the golden age of capitalism, the post-war period, uh, was built, which is mass, mass production, mass consumer demand. And if you don't have an employed population earning reasonable wages, you can't maintain the level of consumer demand, which is bad news for the privileged, for capitalists as well. And so the problem is that so much political power is held by the financial faction, fraction of capital, and they're not interested in, in, in that, but they're perhaps uh, uh, killing the goose that lays the golden egg. And so there are dangers here that they can be addressed, there can be policy changes, Europe has the problem of Germany, which is uh, inflation obsessed rather than uh, uh, rather than growth and employment obsessed, and so that combines with uh, the neoliberal moment to make things difficult. So, you know, if you look at the economic growth rates in two thousand. And eight, two thousand nine, two thousand and ten, the whole world was affected in two thousand and eight. But in two thousand and nine and two thousand and ten, some countries were back to their highest level of uh, of economic growth. Of course, they're virtually all in what we used to call the developing countries. Uh, though I think Canada is the only, <laughs> the only one which uh, is now. Uh, at its highest growth level, uh, uh, but um, 
there's a, there's a dozen uh, countries in the south which are have immediately recovered. So that there is clearly a shift of global power away from the West, though it will take quite a bit of time. And it's not irreversible. Well, it is irreversible in the sense that there is going to be a multi-centric uh, form of capitalism, and, uh, but it doesn't have to mean it doesn't have to mean a substantial decline of the world.